In today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial you will learn how to create paper cutout autumn landscape. First you will learn how to redraw illustration from sketch using pen tool, width tool, shear tool, rectangle tool, and then we'll see how to make paper cutout effect using offset path, gradient, blending modes and drop shadow effects. By the end of this tutorial you will understand how to simulate cutout paper in Illustrator and will be able to create your own paper cutout landscapes even if you're a beginner. You are watching TNT Tutorials, let's move on and create a new document. Select Print, A4, Horizontal Orientation, in Advanced Options select RGB and click on Create. You can download colors, reference and sketch by the link in the video description. Just create layers for them, place them like so, then create new layer. I will rename it to Landscape. To zoom in, I will hold Alt and use Scroll. To navigate through workspace, just hold space to use hand tool. Press P for pen tool. With fill icon selected, click here on none. You don't need to waste your time and redraw a tree like this. This method is not very handy. I will delete this object. What you should do in such cases is just create line. Then press Shift plus W for Width tool and change Width like so. You can change Width anywhere you want. So I will change it only here and here just a bit. We don't want to see rough edges, properties, stroke, round cap. After this Play with proportions, press A for direct selection tool, manipulate handles and points. If you want to see sketch better, unlock sketch layer, bring it up, properties and change opacity. I will change color for this line. After you adjusted this line, click here on object, expand appearance, P for pen tool again. Let's draw another line. Shift plus W to use Width tool. Adjust Width again. Properties. Stroke. Round cap. A for direct selection tool. Manipulate handles. Also sometimes you might notice that you have unnecessary points. P for pen tool and click on unnecessary point to delete it. A for direct selection tool. And adjust handles. When we have this line, we don't need to create all other lines, let's just duplicate it, rotate it, A for direct selection tool, and adjust handles. You can use width tool again, let's duplicate it here. Shift plus W. Let's make it wider. Another copy. Shift plus W. Let's make this one thinner here. You don't need to bluntly follow reference. Sometimes you can turn sketch off to see shape better. In this case I see that I need to add one more point. P for pen tool and simply click on this line to add point. You can duplicate absolutely any branch you want. I need to edit this line, but it's not very handy for me to do this because this line is behind other lines. So I simply select this line and bring it on top of all other layers. Now I can easily work with it. Let's make sketch layer invisible. I will select all these layers. Object, expand appearance. Now they are not lines anymore, they are just an object. After this, properties, pathfinder, unite. And we have only one object. I will rename this layer. I will bring sketch layer down. I for eyedropper tool. Let's pick this color for example. Let's select landscape layer. 
P4 Pen tool, swipe fill and stroke. And right now I will show you another method to work extremely fast. You don't need to use pen tool like this. Simply quickly create lines according to reference. Let's connect these points. With pen tool selected, hold Alt. And quickly make all these lines curved. Don't worry about such moments. After this, we will use Direct Selection tool to edit these lines. A for Direct Selection tool. And manipulate needed handles. Move points. And exactly in the same way, I will create other objects. What you should keep in mind, that later we will cut this image according to these borders. So it's better to create shapes like so. Later you will see why. To quickly stop drawing line and continue with other objects, simply hold Ctrl and click somewhere on the workspace to deselect object. You will still have pen tool active and able to continue. As you can see, I'm doing this very fast. It really takes only a few minutes to redraw all these objects. To draw hills I will use basic methods. Don't drag handles too much, you can drag them just a little. Create shape, A for direct selection tool. And after this, manipulate handles. Hold Alt and move handle to make sharp corner. A for direct selection tool. I will hide all these layers to avoid any distraction. M for rectangle tool. Let's draw a rectangle here. Another one here. P for pen tool. Let's add point, A for direct selection tool, pick this point, hold shift and move it down. The same with this one. Now let's pick this point and drag this dot to make rounded corner. M for rectangle tool again, V for selection tool, hold alt, drag this rectangle to the right and hold shift also. Let's select them both, duplicate them here. Right here I will change proportions, M for rectangle tool again, let's find shear tool, shear tool is over here, after this simply change rectangle like so, V for selection tool, let's adjust proportions, A for direct selection tool, and round corners, a little bit here, a little bit here, like so. Hold Alt, duplicate this object, properties, flip along horizontal axis. Now we need to match this line to this corner. A for direct selection tool, let's pick this point and place this point right here. We don't need these points at all. P for pen tool and simply click on them. We also don't need this point here, so you can remove it also. M for rectangle tool again, draw these rectangles, select them both, horizontal align center, P for pen tool, let's add point here, A for direct selection tool, pick this point, move it up, 
and hold Shift just in case to move these points straight. Let's select these objects and make them smaller. Let's create layer for leaves, P for pen tool, drag handles from point just a little, use smart guides, they will help you to align these points, hold Alt, make sharp corner, connect these two points, A for direct selection tool, hold Alt, and play with handles. We don't need straight object. Let's make something like this. Select this object. Swap fill and stroke. A for direct selection tool. Let's pick this point. And drag this dot to round this corner. P for pen tool again. Swap fill and stroke. Let's draw a line. Shift plus W for width tool. Let's change width here. Properties, Stroke, Round Cap, with this line selected Object, Expand Appearance, select these two layers, and in Pathfinder, let's click Unite. If you want to change proportions after this, A for Direct Selection tool, and play with handles. So for now let's bring this leaf somewhere here, select Landscape Layer, I for Eyedropper tool, let's pick this color. M for rectangle tool, and let's draw a rectangle like this. To bring this layer on bottom, press Ctrl plus Shift plus left brackets. Red color looks unpleasant now, and to quickly pick all lines with red color, I will press Y, press Enter, and select Stroke color. Let's deselect Fill color, and simply click on one of these red lines. They are all selected. Let's adjust any color. I will apply gray for now. We don't need magic wand anymore. Let's adjust colors to all these objects according to reference. Just pick this one for example, I for eyedropper tool, and pick yellow color. On this step use brighter versions of these colors. I mean use this one, this one, bright yellow, and bright pink. Maybe you will need to manage layers. I will select these two and bring them up. I see that I need to unite these walls, so I will pick these two objects, Shift plus M for Shape Builder, and drag with Shape Builder like so. Now this is one object, white color here. Then let's select all these rectangles, hold Shift, select this object also. Shift plus M for Shape Builder, hold Alt, and use Shape Builder like so. I will use red color for roof. Let's apply white color here, white color here also. Sometimes you might want to duplicate some objects, like so. I'll bring this one here. Bring this layer down. Don't worry about all parts that are outside of this artboard. Later we will simply hide them. Now it's time to make this image look more interesting and add gradients. Pick this object, gradient panel, linear gradient, double click on this slider, color picker, pick this color, and for this slider, pick this color. You can move sliders, adjust them like so. To add paper cutout effect, let's pick object, then properties, offset path. Your value can be different, click on preview. You might want to play with meter limit for example. If you will have meter limit 2, you might have this result. Try to increase meter limit, click OK. After you applied offset path, you have copy of original object, and for this copy, we will apply gradient. Gradient panel, linear gradient, adjust these two colors for these sliders, G for gradient tool, and play with gradient direction. Also, if you see that you don't have enough contrast, double click on some slider, color, click here, 
select HSB for example and make this one darker, like so. You can increase saturation. You can apply offset path to all these objects at once. Just select them all, properties, offset path, I will use the same value. And after this I will pick this yellow copies, I for eyedropper tool and click on this yellow gradient. It will be applied automatically to these objects. All that you will need is press G for gradient tool and adjust gradient direction. So basically you will need to adjust gradient only for each color and then duplicate it for same colors. In some cases when you want to experiment with colors and you want to do it fast, you might want to simply use blending modes. Let me show you how to do this. I will apply flat color here, no gradients. Let's press Ctrl C, Ctrl F to make a copy. Gradient, linear gradient, white and black. Adjust direction and then click here on properties, opacity and change blending mode to color burn for example. Now you can click here on this slider and pick brighter gray color. Like this. As you can see, you can quickly experiment with colors by applying different blending modes. Hard light, luminosity, soft light. You can also use combination of these blending modes. For example, we have soft light here, Ctrl C, Ctrl F and let's apply color burn. You can see that in this case color burn works differently. I use blending modes very often and I definitely recommend you this method when you want to quickly experiment with colors. Now it's time to add shadows. To do this you should pick original layer, not copy with gradient, but original layer, effect, stylize, drop shadow, preview and play with these values. For this illustration I used these values. Your values can be absolutely different. Don't forget to turn preview on and you can also adjust drop shadow effect to all objects at once. Let's select them. Effect, stylize, drop shadow, preview and let's click OK. After this you might want to play with drop shadow effect to adjust it differently for different objects. To do this simply pick needed object, properties and you can see applied effect in this panel. Also you can see applied effect in appearance panel. If you don't have it here, click on window, appearance. Click on applied effect, preview and change it any way you want. Let's click OK. Let's bring leaf here, make it smaller, duplicate it, adjust different colors. After this select all these leaves, effect, stylize, drop shadow. Now let's select this background. Ctrl C, Ctrl Shift V, select all layers in landscape layer, right click, make clipping mask. If you learned something new from this tutorial, drop a comment below, let me know if everything was clear enough for you and what you liked about this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, support this channel by clicking on subscribe and what's most important by clicking on the bell icon to get notifications about newest interesting tutorials from TNT. I would also appreciate if you will click thumbs up and will share this video. This was TNT Tutorials, see you in next videos!